difference, and mainly it gives some kind of motivation why we do indeed the kind of nanophotonic as a subject and with specific application. So this is the first part of the specific application, and later we will do uh, some kind of material things, uh, keeping in mind that some of the application we mentioned earlier, for example, in this lecture. So I start with uh, pretty specific applications, uh, like improving the performance and the functionality of the photonic devices, with a nanowave guide and subwave and structural metal material as, as the first part, and my second part will be on the uh, metal material slow light. And again, for some of the uh, applications for sensing or, or other uh, purpose uh, device application. And uh, my third part will be on the uh, Bio applications, biomedical application with uh, these kind of uh, nano materials. And the last part uh, is, uh, let's see, it's on the harvesting of light and uh, absorption of light using some of the resonance of the nano structures. So, so let me just uh, start with uh, the first part. And I would like to make my lecture more informal, interactive, so you can uh, interrupt me anytime, you raise, raise your hand, so we can uh, have kind of casual talk, I can explain. And, and, uh, and for this part of the work, uh, the work mainly done together with uh, my postdoc, or a PG student or a former PG student, colleagues in, in both Zhejiang uh, University and uh, some in law institute of uh, technology in Stockholm. Uh, a few of uh, them are sitting in the audience. Now, we all know the Morse laws for electronic IC, uh, namely, the integration density or the total number of a transistor uh, in a CPU chip uh, doubled every 18 months. So this is a well-known uh, law for electronic IC and it's driven by the market. And why we have such a, 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 a Morse law? If we look at the technology, uh, you see this market-driven uh, law is made possible because the technology is advanced. If you look at uh, this technology in the nano fabrication, when the resolution goes down to 0 0.1 uh, micro, uh, you, you see here the integration density increase dramatically. And we are going to like 1 billion transistor or CPU chips. And all these things uh, is possible due to the progress in the nano technologies. And so in this scenario, nano fabrication is very important uh, for the microelectronics uh, and this uh, particular uh, most loss. But, but now if we look at the uh, photonics integration circuits, uh, we try to uh, make a similar type of Morse law and look at the integration density of the photonic device. And we first take some of the state of the art of the photonic device uh, for integration, and starting from 1985 and go to the current state of the art and pick up the best result of the best integration density, and then we plot such a curve, and in this case, for this curve, uh, we break down into the basic uh, or fundamental uh, elements or functionalities, and uh, regardless of the material or what kind of functionalities, uh, specific uh, devices, just look at the integration density, the best result, and we plot out, it turned out that it, 
the integration density doubled every year, even faster than the Mohs law. Mohs law is every 18 months doubled, but now in photonic scenario, doubled every year, 12 months. Now, if you look at a uh, very specific device, like a, a low-wave light grating, uh, which has been uh, widely used in the backbone of optical, optical communications, and uh, uh, for any kind of material, we just pick up the best result for the AWG this specific uh, device, and uh, and we plot this curve. And again, it shows that integration density for this specific device doubling every year. So this is amazing. For uh, time, the integration develops even faster than the microelectronics. Uh, which is kind of a uh, surprise to most of us. Uh, so this is a very good news, encouraging news for uh, for time in the community in this uh, uh, specific uh, native photonic or uh, integrated photonics. And uh, on the other hand, if we look at the state of art, and look at the chip size, we still feel very embarrassing. The size is still at the order of wavelength, rather than in the microelectronics, the people already go down like uh, 10 nanometers. But in our case, it's still at uh, several hundred uh, nanometers at least. And if you look at the lateral dimension, the lens, uh, even worse. It's uh, sometimes even several centimeters in the lens. So this is very embarrassing. Uh, so you may wonder why, why is that? Even this uh, uh, more slow is so encouraging, doubled every month, uh, uh, every years for the photonic. Why we are still at such an uh, embarrassing state? The size is still so big compared to microelectronics. Now, so what is the problem? Why we couldn't uh, do better or equally good as uh, microelectronics? Now, we just pick up the simple case of the wave guy. Think about a wave guy. You know, here's a conventional dialect wave guy. We have uh, a, a little bit of higher reflection index and as a core and light guide along the core. And this is more profile light, mainly confined in this core region and with some tail spread to the uh, cladding region. This is standard waveguide, a guide mode profile uh, in a three layer structure, a waveguide. Now, you may think uh, we can simply shrink the size of the waveguide, make this waveguide nano, the, the core, make it a uh, nano size uh, core. Uh, what will happen? Uh, on one hand, you get a, a nano waveguide. On the other hand, you look at the mode profile, they spread. The diameter getting smaller, the mode, mode profile getting wider. And that causes a big problem. If you're putting another waveguide nearby, they will cause a cloud talk. Uh, and if you bend it to this waveguide, this value loss will be tremendous, and that is no good for uh, photonic integration. So this is uh, not going to be useful just by uh, simply uh, shrink the size of the waveguide. We have to think about the uh, mode profile, the mode uh, spot size of the guided modes, uh, and that is the key. We want uh, uh, nano size of the guided wave uh, field uh, besides uh, the nano size of the wave guide. So this is not good solution. Uh, now uh, some of you may know uh, the surface plasma wave guide. Surface plasma as, as the metal at the optical frequency they can confine light well on the surface due to the surface of plasma resonance. And, and then you can think about uh, make a piece of a metal strip 
and the optical frequency, the line may confine well on the surface, and in this case, two surfaces, and we shrink the size of the uh, metal strip, uh, the metal wire, and, and the line, more the spot size indeed uh, shrink to the size of nanometers. On the other hand, we have tremendous loss due to the loss of the material, the, uh, the metal, at the optical frequency. So this uh, still is not a practical solution, uh, at least at this moment. So these are the problems. So improved photonic integration density is not as easy as you may think. The main problem is the spot size and the loss uh, all these things, not just the nano fabrication uh, technology. So in, so in this scenario, we see the difference. It is not that the nano fabrication technology play a key role, uh, like in the microelectronic case. Here, we have to think about uh, better ideas. The idea is very important, and maybe the materials as well, rather than the nano fabrication technology. So in order to make a photonic integration circuits have an electronic circuits kind of development, we really need to reduce the size of the photonic integration device. So uh, for this part of the lecture, I mainly go through uh, several uh, parts. Uh, first, we go through like a silicon-based nanowave guide in the device. You uh, utilize the high reflection index uh, contrast to improve the uh, integration density, and maybe some other ideas using uh, dielectric nanowave guide and device. And then we go to the subwave bands, uh, structured metal materials, and, and finally the plasma nanowave guides. So first we uh, look at the silicon-based uh, nanowave guide. Uh, uh, we know the fibers, conventional single motor fiber, they're made of the uh, silicon oxide called germanium dot in the core. Uh, and the silicon oxide uh, cladding, the reflection index, uh, contrast or difference is small. It's only like 0.1%. And, and, and that's why the uh, uh, the diameter of the wave guide has to be pretty large, uh, typically like a uh, 9 micro uh, size. If you go to the wave guide using silicon, germanium double silicon oxide, you will have roughly the size of like a 5 micro. But then if you're using the silicon, silicon's reflection index is pretty high, which is like a 3.5 and we can use silicon oxide or even air as a cladding, then reflection contrast is very large. Silicon oxide reflection index is only 1.5. And with this high contrast of the, uh, this silicon wave guys, we can confine like uh, much tighter. And, and, and this is uh, silicon uh, wave guys uh, we fabricate. Here is a silicon oxide uh, cladding, and on the top is the silicon layers. And you can have that uh, from the commercial SOI wafer uh, used widely for microelectronics. Uh, silicon substrate with uh, uh, silicon oxide uh, buffer layer, uh, this layer, uh, to separate the top silicon layer from the substrate for the isolation purpose, so it's called uh, silicon on insulator, uh, SOI wafers, and, and we etch through the top silicon layer down to the silicon oxide layer, and then we can have uh, fairly uh, isolated this high reflection index uh, weight guide, which is on top of the silicon oxide, and, and that size can be just 100 uh, nanometer. Uh, compare the silicon oxide, typically 5 micro. And then we can bend the wave guide sharply, uh, after small bending with a, a small loss. And with this uh, kind of uh, wave guides, high control wave guide, very small wave guide, we can make a device, uh, one specific uh, 
case, you know, used again using a radio wave guy grating uh, a conventional, uh, like silicon oxide, a radio wave guy grating. The size is about uh, centimeter size, uh, 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 10,000 uh, uh, micro size. And uh, if we look at the, using our uh, little wave guys, so we can make the size, it's only like uh, 40 or 50 uh, micro. So, so this is much, much smaller than uh, the conventional silicon oxide based uh, device, uh, fulfilling the same uh, functionality, separating different uh, wavelengths to different ports. The input is the same. However, at the different output, different wavelengths will be output, and that is important for the art communication WDM applications. And this is uh, uh, the AWG uh, we, we designed, and also certainly we use overlap to free propagation uh, region to improve the integration gains even further. And, and this, uh, this is uh, the uh, waveguide we made. Uh, the PCVD deposit uh, uh, silicon oxide uh, isolation layer and also uh, amorphous silicon for the top layer and then using the EP lithography to make the digital patterning and then using the ICP inductive copper plasma for vertical etching uh, to make these waveguide. And, and since we're using amorphous silicon deposition rather than uh, uh, commercial SOI wafers, the loss is uh, still high, like 4 dB per millimeters. Uh, however, if we use the commercial SOI wafer, this can be uh, much smaller. And then we can make a, a very small PWG. Let's see. So this AWG, uh, we fabricated it first of all. This is actually the smallest AWG device uh, you can uh, find in the literature. It's only 40 uh, micro it's, uh, in each uh, side. And we can also reduce the size using the class order deflection uh, rather than using the same deflection order. Uh, and this is for the uh, fiber to hole application, only three wavelengths. We can reduce uh, further uh, the, uh, for, uh, using this uh, silicon uh, wave guys. We can make a very small uh, device for fiber to hole application. And and uh, let's see. So the, the, the light is coming in here for different wavelengths and with the grating on the silicon uh, waveguide, and then they were focusing on different output and separate the three different wavelengths, separate them. And and we uh, this is these are the measured result. And we also can use that for uh, ring resonator, make the ring resonator uh, using the uh, silicon. And uh, we can also make uh, this metal layer as uh, uh, this electro to heat it up the device, make a thermal uh, tunable uh, and, and for the ring resonators. Uh, we can do that. Uh, and this ring it can be very small. Uh, on the other hand, with these kind of nano wave guys, uh, a challenge is how to couple the light from single mode, conventional single mode fiber to these nano wave guys and the device, uh, uh, and also couple out to the single mode fiber, uh, because these things are mainly used for optic communication purpose. So uh, we. We have come up with uh, several approaches. One is a bi-level mode converter, like this. This side connect to the single mode fiber mode profile is pretty large, and then gradually taper down to a nano wave guide with minimal loss. And so this is a triangular shape, and they will go down, 
and we will see the mode gradually, indirectly, take to the inner wave guide. Uh, so this is the top view. Uh, uh, this uh, from the vertical side. This, this goes down the final spot. So the mode is here, and uh, uh, it's starting from here, and then goes down here. So this uh, is uh, using these two levels of taper. We can uh, do that. Uh, squeeze the light down to the second layer to the nano wave guys. So another way is to do it uh, using the uh, polarization diversity. I want to separate these uh, two polarization uh, to this uh, nano wave guy using the fiber, uh, just using the grating coupled to these uh, nano wave guy. However, in most cases, they all, only one wave guy, one polarization can be coupled using the grating case. Uh, and then you uh, lose the energy for uh, the other polarization. So what we propose is using the polarization diversity. Uh, we put in this, this grating there, and then the single motor fiber, and then T, two different polarization will be separate. Uh, one is go this TM goes this direction, T in the opposite direction, and then we treat the, these uh, different polarization separately. And you see here, T goes this way, TM goes this way, and, uh, and, and we fabricate uh, this kind of grating for uh, polarization diversity, uh, couple using single motor fiber to couple the line into uh, and separate them. And if uh, uh, in the ideal case, the loss will be uh, each polarization will get 50% of the energy, of the input energy, because it's random polarized. So then it's, it should be like 50%, but uh, due to the material loss of this thing, we can only get like a, a TM case like a 42%, and the T case maybe uh, like 30, 33%. But still uh, fairly good, they can well separate. The main thing is to look at the uh, extinction ratio uh, of these two polarizations. Uh, you see in this wave, uh, wavelength uh, range, they are well separate beyond the 20 dB uh, exti uh, the extinction ratio. So we can separate them and, and use them for that. Uh, so another way is to use the uh, like polarization sensitive, insensitive uh, device. So uh, consider like AWG, Light input here for the TE polarization. Uh, we let it go through this uh, polarization beam splitter, but for the TM polarization, we want them reflected. Uh, and then they go through different light paths, and then uh, with this additional light pass, they can compensate uh, the, the binary fringe and then give the uh, same spectral response for both polarizations. So this way we can also uh, solve the polarization problem. So uh, we can also uh, think about some uh, other uh, dialect nano wave guide idea to improve the integration density. Uh, for example, one of the cases using the uh, this uh, slot wave guide. Uh, conventional wave guide has a reflection index higher in the core, but for this slot wave guide, reflection index actually is smaller. And the clay. Uh, why is that? Because you can use utilize uh, uh, the the continuity of the normal component of the displaced uh, field, the D field. It should be continuous across in the normal direction. And if the reflection index is smaller, the field because D equal to uh, epsilon multiplied by E. And if uh, epsilon is smaller, E must be larger. So the field E must be larger in this low reflection index region, this uh, normal component. And, and then the field will be confined in this low reflection index region. And with, with that kind of idea, we can design a very small ring resonator, for example, and light can be well confined in this region. And you may think that maybe we can using uh, silicon oxide here, while the two cladding region 
silicon, high reflecting gap. But uh, it turned out it's not good for the uh, fabrication. We need to uh, using uh, this uh, 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 silicon nitride rather than silicon oxide. And the reason I will, uh, next slide you will see, we want the reflecting gap between the 2 and the 3.5 in this region will be good for, for, for this purpose. Uh, otherwise, this signal is too small for the polarization sensitive one. It's like below 10 nanometer, it's no good for use. Uh, and you see here the line that is well confined for the TM case. The, uh, the normal component of the E field is well confined in this uh, low reflecting index reading. And, and uh, for the T quasi TE case, it's okay, it's also uh, confined well. And look at the effect index for both polarization, and we want uh, to have the device polarization insensitive, so we don't want to have the by fringe. So we want uh, the, the same reflecting depth, so we choose the uh, cross point here. So the reflecting depth is the same for both polarization. And for this point, you look at the thickness of here. Uh, in this example, the thickness uh, is like 80 uh, nanometers. And you know, if we look at the uh, other reflection index, uh, th in this case, it's the reflection index, the core is 2.3, and, and we're getting like around 80. But if we if one wants to use uh, like a silicon oxide, change this reflecting that go to smaller value, what happens is this, uh, the optimal thickness of this core uh, layer will go down to like a 10 and that's not good uh, for uh, fabrication, difficult to control. But anyway, in this case, we designed the reflecting, uh, this uh, diameter for the bending, the, the ring is can be, uh, the radian can only be like a 5 micro versatile, very compact for this kind of thing. And we can also utilize some kind of fabrication trick to improve the integration density as well. So here is just one example uh, using the uh, lacking effect. Uh, it means that if uh, I make an EV patterning uh, for the mask and then uh, with different size of the hole, and then I'm using the same recipe for the ICD etching, but the smaller hole you see the etched depth will be different. It's uh, much smaller than the bigger hole for the bigger hole case, and I can utilize this kind of uh, lacking effect for uh, for uh, like for some device fabrication, like a direction coupler. These are the two wave guys. I want to. Uh, for same wavelength, so I want to input from this waveguide coupled out from the other waveguide, that's called the direction coupler. And now if I utilize this kind of fabrication trick, instead of have the equal depths of the action in the middle region, I just etched uh, not that deep of the, the, the surrounding one, and then can improve the, uh, the coupling, uh, and then reduce the coupling length. The device was much shorter, and, and I can uh, etch once more. You see here, this shadowly etch, and the, the outside bigger hole is deeply etch. And, and then this device uh, is much shorter uh, than the conventional direction coupler. And we utilize this kind of fabrication trick. And this is a very simple, just etch once for all uh, for the whole device. And so some kind of fabrication trick can be utilized to, uh, to improve the integration density. And here you see uh, we can uh, uh, let the light go out from one uh, output as expected. And if you, uh, to different lens, you can also output equally uh, if you want to wish. So this is, uh, you can also using some uh, nice design to improve further the confinement of the light to a very small region, a nano size. Uh, of one of the idea is using this kind of anti-resident reflecting structure, multi-layer, uh, so the light will be reflected and squeezed to this small uh, top uh, core areas, and uh, and this is. A, 
actually uh, sitting outside, low reflection index area. The, uh, the last is much smaller here, and the main thing is we want to squeeze the light to this uh, region and you utilize this anti resonant multi reflection uh, structure. Uh, we can do that, and you can uh, even combine it with the anti resonant uh, structure together with the uh, slot waveguide uh, ideas and make uh, the spot side of the light even smaller uh, than this uh, air gap region. And uh, uh, some other dielectric data wave guys, uh, we can even utilize the sitting outside. Uh, it's a very mature fabrication technology. Uh, Germany adopted and uh, sitting outside for the cladding. And the main thing is we need to make the rip wave guys. So we have to need to make a vertical edge so that the loss will be small uh, and, and the light will be confined uh, here. Uh, and the reflection in the lateral uh, dimension still has a high contrast of 1.5 and 1 in, in vacuum. So the light can still be uh, well confined in the lateral direction, while in the vertical direction is not critical for the integration uh, density improvement. The main thing is the lateral uh, confinement of the light, uh, which were designed the integration density. And with that kind of uh, design, we fabricate uh, the device and the loss is acceptable. And we make it like a one time two, one time four, one time eight spreader and works well uh, with this kind of thing. Integration density uh, still is uh, pretty good. And we can also use in the polymer, uh, same idea, uh, use the polymer top of the silicon oxide, SU8, to make the waveguide. And again, because there is uh, the rip waveguide, so the lateral confinement is still good because compared to the air in the lateral direction. And this one, we can make a very small AWG. Uh, it's only like, uh, uh, in this direction, like a half centimeters. And conventional uh, AWG is several uh, centimeters. So we can also improve that, and, and we can also uh, make a ring resonator and uh, using the even MMI rather than direction coupler, and then there's no need to, to control the, the gap. Uh, then we avoid the, the, uh, the use of the e beam. Uh, so no need for e beam. We can make this kind of device, and, and, and the result is pretty good. Uh, the drop channel. And also, we can use the thermal tubability uh, for this kind of device, the polymer device. So, uh, so after mentioning these kind of application, uh, so now I want to go to like uh, the material aspects uh, because all of our material needs to uh, be used for some purpose, application purpose, uh, particularly like. Uh, uh, for integrate photonic, some of the device one. So now we will go through some of the material aspect. What's the schedule? What time? We are like 15 minutes behind the schedule, so we can still have 10 minutes <coughs> before the tea break. So uh, we all know we are living in a world with uh, reflection that's uh, larger than zero, positive reflection index. And if we put in a lens here, uh, a, 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 a glass, uh, and we put in a point source here, they, they're going to defocus. Default, and they go to the, this, uh, this is positive reflection, go this way, and then go even further, leave uh, the exit. But if we want a focusing, then we put in a convex lamp and we can make a focusing. So focusing is uh, no big deal. We can easily do that with a convex lamp. However, if you look at the spot side of, of, of the focus, you, you will see this spot side is uh, typically like a half wavelength size. And, and this is what we call the deflection limit. 
and they're in the far field. Uh, this is the deflection they make, okay, the half wavelength size. Now, and uh, uh, for so many years, the people saw that this kind of diffraction limit is some kind of fundamental barrier that God has set for our human beings, uh, at least in the far field. And that kind of thing has been now, uh, kind of view been changed uh, after the appearance of the matter material. And that's the subway structure of the matter material, artificial matter material. I started with three decades ago. Uh, Russian uh, scientist Veslago predict uh, at that time very uh, much theoretically uh, if uh, material has both negative permittivity and probability, what happens is a reflection index and what takes the negative sign of the square root of the absolute mu rather than in the convention case take the positive sign. So that will be a, a, a negative reflection there. And then the light will be reflected in the negative direction and cause a focusing internal lay and go back to the uh, outside medium. And uh, why we uh, have this negative sign? Uh, if you look, if you put a current uh, sheet in this uh, double negative material, and you look at the, uh, the field, capture the field outside, and uh, you, you get an analytical solution, and the wave impedance and the power radiate out from this current sheet, and you get this, you get this expression. And now, since mu is negative, absolutely is negative, now this n must be negative, otherwise the power radiate out of this current sheet will be negative which does not make sense. The power must be positive when they are out. So this, in this case, this A must be negative. So that's the one way to prove that the reflection index takes the square root of the absolute mu, and you need to choose the negative sign rather than positive sign for the energy conservation purpose, at least. And the main thing for this kind of uh, negative reflection index is that uh, it has a sort of a backward wave. Uh, for the convention material, uh, if you like those here, this is the reflection, and this is a transmitted line go this way, and they are on the opposite side of the, the normal direction. And if you look at the uh, pointing vector and the phase velocity, they are in the as the same direction, but for this artificial double negative materials, uh, metal material, the light goes in, and you look at the, this line into the uh, left hand, this metal material, they bend it in the opposite direction, and they are in the same side of the normal direction. And so that's what we uh, uh, call the negative reflection, because this theta become negative. And uh, more amazingly, you see this uh, pointing vector is in this direction, however, the phase velocity in the opposite direction. And, and, and that is what we call the backward wave. The wave, the energy go forward, but the phase go opposite, backward, and we call the backward wave. And if you look at the uh, pointing vector, and all the pH and K vectors, you see that in the conventional material, they, they follow the, the right-hand loops. EH, EH and K, they follow the right-hand loop, uh, right loop, but in this material, they follow the left-hand loop. EH, you have to use the left, left-hand <coughs> loop, and then you're getting the, uh, Sorry, this is the, the, this one should go there, and this one should go here. <coughs> so this is this is convention material right hand loop, so, and this this one is the left hand loop. So you need to use the left hand and E H and give the K this direction. And the pointing vector is the same as E cross H that direction. So so they're in the opposite direction, phase velocity and group line, and that's the play a, a kilo. The uh, meaning of the phenomenon 
interesting phenomena that one can observe in these kind of metal materials. And uh, uh, the def deflection limit means the focus of spot size is always roughly, uh, it's like a half wavelength size, uh, exactly 0 0.61 uh, wavelength over NA, like a Persian, but uh, roughly you can say just half wavelength. And uh, no matter how good your lens, the convex lens is, how large your lens is, you can never be the deflection limit. Uh, with the conventional method, with the conventional materials. And the main reason is that if you take a look at the Fourier transform of the image, the point source, you will see the high frequency component uh, of uh, the, in the lateral direction, the uh, spatial high frequency components, they are evanescence wave, they are exponential decay along the same direction. And when they reach the Focus point, and this is an image point, they are more or less gone, vanished, nothing left because the exponential decay so quick. So that's why you can never be able to get back to the high frequency, high spatial frequency back um, at the image point on the other side of the lens. So that's why you lose the fine structure. You, 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 cannot, you have this uh, finer side. This is diffraction limit. But now if we have a uh, metal material, then it's a different scenario. And you see the evidence component as expected in conventional material, the exponential decay. However, in the left-handed material, metal material, they exponentially increase back to the high level and then decay. On average, overall, they keep the, the same level as where it starts if the metal material has no loss. So in this case, if you're a perfect lens, certainly the material has some loss, and then you, you cannot reach so high, uh, and, and then you exponentially decay high component, high frequency spatial component will be uh, uh, not exactly the, the original uh, value, but uh, decay somewhat to some extent, but uh, still you can beat the deflection limit, get the super resolution, uh, like a, maybe like a uh, 1 over 10 wavelengths, and again, so you beat the deflection limit uh, still, and that is called a super lens. So this is a super lens, uh, even not perfect, but it's uh, very uh, good for applications. And this is, uh, can be at the far field, uh, theoretically at least. Uh, and uh, how do you realize these kind of materials uh, artificially? Now, if we look at the, the array of a metal at a microwave first, microwave is much easier to realize because the size is much uh, larger, easy to, uh, uh, to manage. Uh, it's typical that millimeter to centimeter wavelengths. Uh, as in visible light, it's 100 nanometers. It's uh, difficult to handle uh, compared uh, to the microwave. So at the microwave, if we put a ray of the metal uh, a wire, a finer lens, putting them together, you take a look at the effective index, effective uh, permittivity, and you see here a certain frequency it can be negative. Permittivity can be uh, negative. Now, if we put in this kind of broken ring uh, resonator array of them, this kind of uh, square ring, but with broken uh, in one side, uh, and then we look at the effective permittivity, probability, uh, magnetic probability, uh, you, you see there's a certain frequency, there's a flip uh, over and uh, some kind of resonance occurs and uh, reflect uh, this uh, uh, the mu probability will be negative in certain region. And so if you're putting these two together, if a uh, array of metal wire and a array of broken ring, double broken ring, and then uh, both the epsilon and the mu could be negative in some of the uh, frequent range, and that's the 
way uh, people made it in the experiment, uh, that is 2001, uh, published in Science. Uh, this is a very well known result in the microwave first experimental verification of negative index of reflection because both permittivity and the probability are negative under this microwave uh, range. And you will indeed observe that the microwave goes in the opposite direction, gives the negative reflection. And, and you can do the experiment if you replace the ordinary material, you don't observe the, this negative reflection. Uh, while with this uh, artificial metal material, you indeed observe the negative reflection. And, and then these uh, uh, virtually every year, there's some kind of new things, uh, new application, or, or very interesting phenomenon uh, uh, occurs, uh, just uh, emerge keep scientists uh, excited with this metal material. So one of the examples is a recent uh, cloaking, and Professor C. Titan already discussed us a few examples of the cloaking yesterday. Uh, so you can uh, manipulate the uh, propagation of light or electromagnetic in a way that the, the amp both amplitude and waveform will be restored as if nothing uh, exists in this region inside and then you can make the, the microwave uh, make such a structure uh, uh, gradually uh, taper the structure and you can make a thing uh, hide the object inside this uh, cylinder make it uh, invisible for this mag magnetic wave at this specific wavelength and this is cartoon what most of the people have seen and that is at the, at, at the opposite of frequency, you want to see something uh, transparent. You can, the light can uh, go along the body and see behind uh, this young lady. So that's uh, the, uh, the optical frequency you want to observe someday, achieve this kind of uh, phenomenon or, or applications. Uh, and then you need the other optical frequency, not at the microwave. Frequency, uh, the micro uh, high frequency, and people like a uh, telehealth, it, it's uh, a very natural to go to the optical frequency uh, from microwave. So, people using shrink the size of the uh, spur ring resonator and, and go to the telehealth still works well uh, because the, you can scale down to that uh, level. However, you cannot scale further to the optical frequency uh, because of the, uh, uh, some of the capacitor and the uh, inductors uh, uh, merge and, and break down this uh, linear uh, scaling effect. And, but on the other hand, you can still use like, uh, this double uh, lot structure, uh, these pairs of go nano lot structure to give the negative index, uh, uh, so new particular news can be negative, and the optical frequency plasma, the metal itself can be negative for material. So then you can achieve the, uh, this metal material at optical frequency as well. So, so what is the electromagnetic material? It's, it's, it's defined as uh, Sub-wavelength structure material that exhibit property not found in naturally occurring material or compounds. So that's the definition of a metal material. So uh, it has to be uh, first of all sub-wavelength. It's much smaller than the wavelengths of the details, and also it should have the property you, you don't find in the natural materials. So that's the more or less the uh, definition. Material. So I think that we should take a break. <coughs> Five minutes break. Uh, typically, yeah, maybe take ten minutes break. Specific of photonic crystal design, if you look at the uh, band gap or the equal frequency contour. You see here, if we make a frequent counter kind of circular, that means it's kind of isotropic property uh, after uh, kind of average. 
and and if we, the high frequency counter has a smaller radio, that means the pointing vector is is propagating uh, in opposite direction as the phase velocity, and then give you the backward uh, phenomenon, backward, uh, backward the propagating probably uh, like a left-handed material, and that gives you the negative index refraction. So if we design a special photonic crystal with this kind of equal frequency contour, then you can expect the negative reflection effects. The light goes in here, uh, this is the interface between air and the photonic crystal, and then you see the light in this media photonic crystal is uh, propagated in opposite side of, uh, of the conventional uh, way. It's the, this is the normal and uh, both incident and uh, reflection is in the same uh, side of this normal direction. And this will give you the uh, negative reflection. And with this negative reflection, we can uh, make some design. Uh, for example, uh, this open cavity. Uh, one example I want to show here is uh, well, what is the idea of the open cavity? Open cavity says, uh, if I, ha I have uh, two different type of material, one is positive uh, index, uh, another is negative index, and say if I put it in this way, a simple way, and, and for each quarter uh, it's filled with one material, uh, and, and now you see, look at the light path surrounded at this, the, the center, uh, they cancel each other. The light path, the net light path will be zero. This is positive and negative, positive and negative, and then the total light path will be zero. And that will give you the resonance. Uh, and this is different from conventional resonance. The light path is always like integer, non zero integer of uh, wavelengths. But here is zero, which is also an integer. Uh, kind of, it's, it's a special case of, uh, and give you the resonance, adding phase. They have the same phase when the light go along the circle. And, and, and you can expect a resonant phenomenon uh, for this kind of structure along the center. And we try to utilize the photonic crystal negative reflection to fill this cord, quarter and with an uh, effective index equal to minus one and we tried very hard and never uh, succeed. And why? Uh, and later we, we, we go to another uh, shape, the wedge of the case, the 60 degrees the wedge, and, and the line pass going this way, and again uh, this is positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, again it's zero, uh, it gives you also resonance. And this case works very well. Uh, the resonance, the Q factor is pretty large, and the reason we, we uh, later observed that because the reflection is very high at this kind of type of uh, interface, uh, when at this like 90 degree, you inevitably at one of the surfaces will give you a very large reflection and uh, for this kind of uh, lattice of photonic crystal. And for the uh, 60 degrees wedge, all these surface interface, the reflection can be minimized uh, simultaneously and, and, and make this zero order uh, uh, cavity works. And why we call the open cavity? Because along the radial direction, radial dire there's no refractive uh, mechanics. Typically, when we call the uh, cavity resonator, we know it need a uh, Miller, some Miller gives you the reflection, the light bouncing back and forth. Uh, but uh, you see in the radial direction there is uh, no reflecting mechanics. So that's what we call the uh, open and open cavity. It's actually zero's order cavity. And uh, uh, so that's one example. Another example we uh, made of this kind of beam spreader. Uh, made this uh, photonic crystal, uh, we designed it so the effective index have different values, uh, uh, positive for the TM polarization, but the negative 
uh, effectively for the T polarization, and then we can separate the two uh, polarization. The line with both polarizing goes in, hit the photonic crystal, and then uh, separate. One goes uh, negative reflection way, and another is positive reflection, and separate them. And then we, again, through this uh, design, you see the uh, equal frequency counter is circular, uh, and also it's a kind of isotropic behavior and use. And you see this kind of uh, wave propagation nicely inside the media as well, as a, like a homogeneous media. And this is the experiment we did, and uh, we put in these kind of nano pillars, maybe this photonic crystal are the negative index for the TE polarization. And then you see here the light, the T polarized work. And go through the negative reflection and hit this spot uh, for the output. Uh, while the other uh, uh, output has no output for the T polarization, and for TM, it only output here. Uh, nothing comes uh, for, for the, the bottom output. And the extinction ratio is pretty uh, large, uh, over, I think, uh, over like a 10 dB, uh, over a larger wavelength. Uh, range, uh, 100 nanometers of uh, wavelength range. So, so it works uh, very well for this uh, photonic crystal negative index uh, effective wave. As a, and, and another uh, nano waveguide or plasmonic, so we, uh, uh, at the optical frequency we can utilize the surface plasmas, uh, maybe the waveguide. Of, uh, Geometrically small, as well as the spot sign of the guided wave, very small. And what we proposed uh, uh, four years ago, is uh, five years ago, is uh, make a slot of this metal thin field, make a slot, and and then start a uh, the light confinement. And and you see the light can confine very well at the, here and. And this is like a 50 nanometers size. When the slot is a 50 nanometer size, we, we can make a, a very well confined uh, slot wave guide. And, uh, and, and, and you may think of uh, what, what about the shrink of the size, the slot even further smaller to like a 10 nanometer? Can I still have the confinement very well confined around the center uh, for a waveguide spot size of only 10 nanometers? Uh, and the answer is no, you cannot do that. Why? You know, this is the reason. We studied the, the mode for these, the eigen mode for this slot uh, in the metal sheet. And you find that uh, we found that there are four different modes of different symmetry, and I called it the corner modes uh, in one of the SPI uh, uh, proceedings. Uh, this this part is not in our Optic Express paper, but some of the, the, the details with the mode analysis, and uh, uh, we presented in the conference. So then the, you see the light confined at the corner, and the, the, the cor it's called the corner mode. Uh, however, when the size is shrink to 50 nanometers, these corner modes will overlap to each other and make the maximum intensity at the center. And you'll see a very nice uh, mode profile when the, the slot is uh, uh, of 50 nanometers the width. Why, if you shrink the light to like a 10 nanometer, uh, the mode profile is pretty bad. Uh, you don't have the high intensity in the center. And if you go to uh, uh, like 100 nanometer or even larger, then it's not so meaningful because we want to have spot size very small for improving the integration density. So this is 50 nanometer for uh, for this uh, case is kind of uh, miracle uh, numbers, and that is actually the state of the art. The smallest spot size you can focus the light in the waveguide today still is a 50 nanometer. So that's what we propose, and uh, I think the same week. Uh, 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 Stanford University, they have also 
propose the uh, similar structure as a slot, this kind of slot, we, we, uh, because we also do the fabrication, so we put in the cladding on top, silicon oxide, so that uh, the dirt, uh, some of the nanoparticle dirt will not uh, uh, trapped in the, these uh, uh, trench. So we put in the cladding uh, also there, studying uh, the case, but uh, his case is simple, with just air, just a, a, a slab uh, without the cladding at all, and publishing the same week, more or less a similar time. Uh, again, uh, the, for, for the reason I explained in our conference paper, this is, uh, has to be the corner more has to be 50 nanometer for this material, golden material. Uh, you cannot shrink it further to like a 10 nanometer, 20 nanometers. So, so, so uh, obviously his result is also like a 50 nanometers. So, uh, uh, I, so, so, uh, so, uh, so, so, in, in some of, I, uh, I, in some of the conference, uh, he also uh, indicate that that the. Uh, uh, the, 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 our group will independently carry out the, this work. Uh, for this state of art, uh, the smallest oxide uh, weight guy uh, down to the 50 nanometers, uh, so I think, uh, uh, to be fair, I should also mention they did the, the work independently in uh, the same period of time. So, so you see the 50 nanometers oxide is a state of the art smallest wave guy, uh, you can um, uh, confine light. It's, uh, it, it's no big deal you make as a wave guy like a 10 nanometers, a simple, with today's uh, sophisticated nano fabrication technology. The thing is whether you can confine light tightly down to 10 nanometer size now. And, and today, still 50 nanometer is a state of the art. And, and, and think about that the work we done is five years ago. And still there's no big major breakthrough to make the uh, light confinement uh, much smaller. So, so, so the, the main problem, again, as I mentioned at the beginning, is not the nano fabrication technology, but the idea. We simply don't have a great idea how to design a good wave guy which can confine light at the optical frequency down to like a, uh, a few 10 nanometers uh, with acceptable loss. Uh, we certainly uh, uh, analyzed at that time also the, the loss, the material loss, uh, the wave guide loss, and the bending loss, all these things uh, in that paper. And we fabricated uh, this uh, certain plasma uh, wave guide uh, with the bending and device and a wide range, a uh, wide split, split. So the uh, concluding remark I want to make is that in order to make a photonic uh, integrated circuit have an electronic integrated circuit like a development, we really have to come up with some novel design. Uh, make a fancy material like a plasma of extremely low loss at optical frequency. And still, we still don't have that kind of material yet. Or utilize a novel sub wavelengths uh, structured material, including metal material, and uh, maybe the liquid crystal for tubability, uh, and uh, some of the nanoparticle and like quantum dust, nano lots, which I will cover in my later lectures. So, with that kind of uh, ideas, uh, rather than uh, nano fabrication technology we can make photonic integration uh, circuits have similar kind of state of art as the microelectronics. Unfortunately today we are very embarrassed that we couldn't make it. You know. Even we have a very sophisticated nanotechnology. So I hope some of the students in the audience can utilize your great fantasy, think about the, some new design. Just get a piece of paper, work on it, think about it. Forget about the nano fabrication technology, okay? Find a good design and confine the light down to a few nano, 10 nanometers size. That will be great for photonic integration uh, circuits. Improve the, our dream, ultimate dream, to have a 
photonic integration circuits kind of industry have a sophisticated market uh, like electronic industry, uh, photonic, uh, electronic microelectronic industry. And, and that would be really great, like uh, today we know where sort of photonic uh, optical interconnect but still the size is very large. Uh, like uh, HP, uh, IBM, they are all working on the optical interconnect. And, and, and we can never come up with like a, this kind of wavelength so small as the metal electronic, uh, micro electronics case. So uh, I should have switched uh, to next part, uh, just uh, give kind of quick stop. Some of the slow wave, uh, slow line wave line based on backward weight, uh, and uh, maybe telehealth so slow line uh, and <coughs> transmission enhancement and little antenna. This thing uh, will leave uh, for the, uh, tomorrow. And this one I already gone through the slow line in slow line in left hand material uh, wave guide. Start with that. That is a work that we uh, here see. I put in a. a Conventional dialect material here on top of the left hand material, metal material with double negative material, <laughs> and I form a simple three layer the structure. And up cladding, I simply using the vacuum. So now we look at this kind of waveguide structure, and we can analytically plot out, uh, calculate the dispersion curve and the plot of the dispersion curve. And, and in this case, you see. The groove velocity will be zero at this frequency, uh, at this point, and uh, there are two modes uh, uh, along this uh, critical uh, point, and in the neighborhood, the groove velocity will be very small, so that you can slow down the light. And and if you look at the uh, the pointing vectors at this uh, uh, critical point or in the neighborhood. You see the light go in this long way. Uh, it sort of like a move four steps forward, for, forward and then back by three steps. So the net result is only like a one step forward. So slow down the light this way. And, and in this case, we use the Zulu model for this uh, the double negative material, and we use the. We use the uh, 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 metal material on the substrate. Why? Because uh, in the wave guide, typically light are confined uh, in the core material. So the core material, we don't want to have the much loss. We want a low loss material uh, serve the core. So I put the uh, conventional material on the core, and but the low, uh, some of the uh, metal materials the subject because uh, metal material at this stage has uh, uh, quite a large loss, so the loss part we're putting on the subject, and hopefully we can get a uh, better result, but we have compared both, also putting the subject in, uh, sw swapped the subject in the core materials. Uh, but anyway, I just uh, we showed this result in this case, in these papers, and uh, so, so in this case, uh, the groove velocity can be uh, very small and can slow down, and you see the pointing factors, as I mentioned. So move four steps forward, 
and three steps backward. Then the, the natural design is only one step, so very slowly. So you go forward and backward, and go forward and backward, and so gradually you uh, you move forward in a very slow way, so to slow down the line. So that's uh, that's the whole idea using this kind of metal material to slow down the uh, light. And uh, there was a critical thickness. Uh, the, the moon velocity will be zero when the thickness of the core has uh, this kind of reach at this point, critical thickness, like uh, we call the critical thickness, and the critical thickness of the moon velocity will be zero. And, and this, uh, uh, and, the, and the velocity, groove velocity, mainly depending on the thickness, uh, the, the normalized thickness, normalized with the wavelength. Uh, if the material are fixed. So that's the whole idea. And that work we published, uh, 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 that's um, nearly uh, four and a half years ago in IGB journal. Uh, that because this metal material is genetic, it could be for the light, it could be for the microwave. So it's, uh, we publish, uh, uh, somehow we uh, publish in the microwave communities because at that time we might it's much easier to fabricate this double negative material at microwave uh, fre uh, frequency. So uh, we call the slow propagation of electromagnetic wave in, uh, in the dialect snap wave guy. And uh, we uh, say they propagate very slowly along such a wave guy. If the thickness of the core layer is chosen appropriately, when the thickness of the critical thickness, we can even, uh, even Stop the line and even approach zero. The groove velocity can even, the speed of the guide we can even approach zero and stop and trap it there. And, and we even did the simulation. We put in here the critical thickness here, and, and the line were indeed trapped in this uh, critical thickness region. It cannot go out and trap the line. So, I think that I the and we studied the critical thickness of propagation of the guide wave for uh, let's see, uh, critical thickness. And we designed such a table wave guide and, and to even trap the electromagnetic wave. So, so we trap the light uh, electromagnetic wave uh, in this region. And, and uh, that was a publication of four and a half years ago. And uh, later, uh, I think uh, that was in two, uh, 2007, uh, I suddenly read a, a paper published in Nature by uh, uh, some of the group uh, in UK, and uh, they, 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 get the, they studied the critical sickness of this weak guy, and the critical sickness, uh, the critical sickness, again, they stop the light. And then they taper the, the structure, and because this, uh, as I mentioned, uh, this uh, uh, the groove velocity that depending on the normalized thickness, critics, critical thickness, uh, normalized by wavelengths, uh, so the critical thickness will be uh, uh, stopped. Uh, however, if your wavelength change, that the critical thickness certainly will be changed proportionally. So, and if you take this, the structure, if the tape the structure, different thickness serve as a different critical thickness for different wavelengths, different wavelengths certainly will be trapped at different position. So the same idea is used to, to trap the light of different wavelengths at different position. And, and, and they give a, a, a fancy name called the rainbow and publish the paper in nature. And, and, and they didn't sign our work, which is the same, exactly the same idea. You know, the critical thickness, you can trap the, the line there. And, and uh, uh, now if we look at that, uh, uh, the, uh, and we certainly want to uh, look at the, uh, the case whether you can uh, really trap the line for different wavelengths whether it can be used for some application. And that is WTM the uh, application we call, we know the rainbow, uh, because they call this rainbow uh, principle. And uh, uh, 
label you know different wavelengths, and we want to separate them, uh, separate them. And, and you know, all the wavelengths go through the same fiber and separate them. And then you need to uh, study the cost of the should wear. And then we studied uh, this, uh, whether the, this uh, trapped uh, rainbow is uh, really uh, feasible. And, uh, uh, and in this case, uh, we, we put in, uh, because we, we want to point out, point, point out this kind of phenomenon also with some uh, new materials. New, uh, so we replace this uh, double negative material with a photonic crystal of negative index because they are uh, realizable experimentally. So we designed this photonic crystal with the refraction index equivalent to like minus one. And look at this uh, structure and uh, see whether, and this is a gradually tapered structure. The second is critical center, gradually, and see whether we can really trap the rainbow as the nature uh, paper claimed. Uh, so, uh, uh, so you see here, if, uh, and, and here, see here, the, this blue flag zero in the labeling, uh, there are two modes there, uh, very slow, and, uh, and, 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 and we, we found that, that it's because these two modes would be coupled to each other, and you, instead you would be uh, able to track the light at the critical thickness, you'll see the light actually oscillating. Uh, in, in this region, uh, rather than stopped. Now, if we say the different wavelengths in uh, theoretically, in the ideal case, we, uh, if the rainbow principle were, we will expect that the light of this frequency uh, trapped at uh, this region, critical thickness. However, you see the light spread over a, a wider range. And uh, different wavelengths, uh, they, they, they have the different center, however, spread, again, spread. And then they will have the cluster. See here, this is the center, and this wavelength center here, however, they have the kind of tails uh, uh, cluster to, to this frequency. And then it will not work for the WDM application uh, for, the, uh, for the, this kind of rainbow uh, principle. And, and, and this is uh, this, in this uh, photonic crystal type, the uh, uh, negative index slow line we guide, we, we study that, and, and, and certainly, and we just uh, point out that uh, uh, we just expressed our unhappiness of that it, they didn't sign our work early work, which is three years ago. So I put it in applied way. Say so in our present work, uh, we have proposed the uh, uh, left-hand material to slow down and even trap the light. A similar structure is used to achieve a so-called rainbow. That's uh, the nature of paper. Uh, however, the, uh, the left-hand used in these ways are always lossy and it's difficult to realize. So we use the, this, uh, this uh, photonic crystal to, to replace that. Uh, and I think uh, I have So, so anyway, the rainbow uh, principle may not work uh, because the class talk of, of the two uh, neighboring uh, modes. Uh, and, and our earlier three years ago, now it's actually four years, four and a half years ago, the conclusion is more appropriate uh, compared to the nature's uh, paper. Uh, we just say that you can slow down and you can trap the light, but not the separate the different uh, wavelengths without a cluster with little cluster, a separate cluster. You can, you can slow down, you can trap down, but they still spread. But we didn't discuss the, 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 the rainbow uh, principle for application because they are not so useful because they cluster uh, each other. So that's the, the main problem for this. Um, I think I uh, uh, better stop here. So, uh, you still have some time for lunch and for sightseeing. Any question? Quick question. 
Now, Ching Kuang, you have any announcement? Okay, so maybe we just uh, finish it. Oh, you already got yeah, yeah, I have a quick announcement for international students. If you would like to pick up your uh, receipts for meals, those are available here with Jumping. Uh, 